Hey everyone, welcome to this Neko Matata tutorial. This tutorial is an introduction to inverse kinematic rigging, also known as IK rigging, using Blender 3D. If you're completely new to IK rigging, then this video is for you. This video is meant to teach you more concepts that you'll need in order to create this rig. I'll be going over the difference between forward and inverse kinematics, when to use forward kinematics versus inverse kinematics, how to create an IK bone chain, and how to enable and disable IK in order to easily improve your rig. The term inverse kinematics seems pretty big and scary, but it's actually really easy to learn. Let's get started. Forward kinematics versus inverse kinematics. What is the difference? First, let's see the difference. I'm going to create the same pose with these two bone chains. Watch for the difference in how I create the same pose. Did you see the difference? On the left, we have a forward kinematic bone chain. This is your default bone chain behavior, where the parent bones tell their children what to do. Typical. The orders go one way and are passed forward down the chain. That means that the last bone is influenced by everyone else, and the first bone takes orders from no one since it has no parent. The IK chain works differently. The first and last bone work together to tell the bones in between how to behave. You'll notice that I'm moving an extra bone in order to manipulate the last bone in the chain. This bone is called the IK target. It's a helper bone that must exist outside the bone chain. If I inspect the bone properties, you'll see this bone has no parent. In technical terms, the target cannot be part of an IK chain because it causes an infinite loop that the IK solver can't solve. I like to think of the target as a bad boy that the last bone wants to run off with. The last bone goes wherever the target goes, and the concerned family just kind of follows along. Easy, right? That's all you need to know. So, let's talk about when to use forward kinematics and when to use inverse kinematics. The arms are a good example of a set of bones that will switch between inverse kinematics and forward kinematics often. If you have arms that are swinging and waving, you might want to use forward kinematics. If an arm is reaching out to grab something, or let's say your character is doing a push-up, then inverse kinematics would be great to use. If your character is sitting down and swinging their legs from a chair, forward kinematics. If your character is doing squats, inverse kinematics. It's all about picking the easiest method to get the job done. That's it. Next, I'll teach you how to make an FK chain and an IK chain, just like the ones you see here. To create this FK chain, add a new armature by pressing Shift A and selecting armature, or if you're already in the armature, press Shift A to add a bone. Scale the bone, select it, and press W to subdivide twice. Select the bones, and press Alt-F to flip their direction. This isn't a necessary step. We simply used Alt-F to flip the direction of our bones. Our chain is now facing down instead of up. Now you have an FK chain with four bones. Remember, forward kinematics is the default behavior, so we don't have to do much to create an FK chain. Next, we'll create the IK chain. Press Shift A to add a bone. Scale the bone. Select it. Press W to subdivide twice. Select the bones and press Alt F to flip their direction. Now we'll add the IK target. Select the last bone in your chain. Press E to extrude the target. Select the target and clear its parent by pressing Alt P or go to the Properties panel and clear the parent there. Next, I'm going to rename my bones first, second, third, last, and target in order to stay organized. In order to get inverse kinematics to work, we need to add a bone constraint to one of our bones in the chain. Toggle into Pose Mode. Select the last bone in the chain. In the Properties panel, find the Bone Constraint tab. The icon looks like a bone with a chain next to it. Click the button that says Add Bone Constraint. 
select Inverse Kinematics under the Tracking category. Under Target, select Armature, and under Bone, find your target bone. Look, you did it! You created your first IK chain. There is an easier way to add the IK bone constraint. First, select your target bone. Then, select the bone that you'd like to add the constraint to. Press Shift-I, and this will add the inverse kinematic constraint to the selected bone. One important setting for IK chains is the chain length. Go to the IK constraint in the Properties panel and find the box that says Chain Length. If the length is zero, it means the IK chain will go all the way up until it finds a bone with no parent. You can manually define how long you want your chain to be by making the number greater than zero. Next, I'll explain some common IK issues and how to solve them. If your bone chain is completely straight and you try to move your target into the chain, the chain might freeze up. The way to fix this is to kind of jiggle or tweak one of the bones inside the chain so that the chain is not completely straight. Another common issue is getting your bone chain to bend in the correct way. By default, your chain might bend left when you want it to bend right, or vice versa. In order to fix this, we'll need to add a pole target. Start by adding another bone to the armature. Move this bone out to where you want your chain to bend. This is a helper bone, so just like the target bone, make sure it is not related to the main chain. So clear the parent. Name the bone something useful, like pole target. For the main chain, you'll want to adjust the bone roll. A bone roll is sort of like a rotation of a bone around its core. Select a bone in edit mode, go into the properties panel, under the bone tab, and adjust its roll. Make sure that the roll for each bone is set to zero. Now we're ready to set our pole target. In pose mode, select your bone with the IK constraint. In the Properties panel, under Bone Constraints, find the IK constraint and set the pole target to the bone that we just created. Sometimes you'll have to adjust the pole angle. Right now, by default, the pole angle was set to zero. Sometimes the default won't work for you and you'll need to set it to something like negative 90, 90, or zero. I'll set mine to 180. Now when you move your target bone, the bone chain will always point in the direction of the pole target. There's one more thing that we can do to improve this setup. Most of the time, we want our pole target to move with our target bone. Let's go into edit mode. Set the pole target's parent to the target bone. And then go back into pose mode. Now the pole target moves with the target bone. It'll also follow the rotation of the target bone. This is really useful when you're animating. The last thing I'd like to talk about is bone constraint influence. If we go to our inverse kinematic bone constraint, we'll see an influence slider. This slider can be set to any value between 0 and positive 1. 0 means that inverse kinematics is disabled, and 1 means that it's turned all the way on. If it's set to somewhere around 0.5, it means we're halfway between forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. I usually don't set it to 0.5, but it's nice to know you can. So why is this influence slider so important? It's useful because if you're animating, you can set keyframes on it, and this means you can switch between inverse and forward kinematics during an animation. Set an animation keyframe on your timeline by right-clicking the Influence box and choosing Insert Keyframe. Well, that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be showing you how to connect your armature to your mesh. Thanks for watching. Peace!